Welcome back. Last time we managed to get a root shell on this Zossi Wi-Fi CCTV camera. We did that by going into the U-Boot console, changing the boot arguments to start a simple shell, mounting sys and proc, seeing that the file system was read-write, using password to change the root password hash and rebooting and logging in via the serial console. Now I've disconnected the serial console now. We saw through that serial console that this device was running Telnet on the Ethernet interface. So what we're going to do now is we're going to see how we use this Ethernet interface to interact with the device to see if we can get a Telnet shell. Now one of the things that I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Wireshark to work out what the IP address of this device is. So we could know what that IP address is using the serial console and running ifconfig and seeing it there. But let's see what we can see through Wireshark. So I'm just going to go into Wireshark on my virtual machine and we've got this USB network device there showing, showing up. So I'm just going to start capture there. And immediately what we see there is traffic, ARP, ARP requests. Who has 192.168.138.254? Tell 192.168.138.2. So what we've got going on here is the device is shouting out using ARP requests asking for 192.168.138.254. That will be the gateway it's expecting to communicate with, I'd imagine, and it's saying my IP address is 192.168.138.2. So let's set our IP address to 192.168.138.254. So again, I'm pretty lazy. I'm going to use NM Connection Editor here um, to do this. Whilst I'm doing this, I'm just actually going to unplug the Ethernet connection just so it flushes that interface. We're going to change the settings. Once we're at this stage, left from the TFTP address there, so 138.254. So now we're going to be the gateway. We're going to be that IP address on that network so we can scan it and we can interact with it. So we've done that. I am now going to plug the Ethernet cable back in and within a few seconds we should see there our wired interface has that address. So now what we should be able to do is port scan the camera 192.168.138.2 and let's see what it comes back with. Wow that's quick. That's exactly what we're expecting. 23 Telnet running on that interface. 554 uh, RTSP real-time streaming protocol for the video and 8000 which um, could be some kind of web interface. Actually whilst, whilst we're just doing some other stuff I'm just going to port scan that with dash A so just give it a bit of a prod on those to, to kind of fingerprint and work out what's going on. Could cause the device to go a little bit wrong but we can see it's running Telnet that was what we we're expecting so let's try Telnetting into it. Telnet 192.168.138.2 Login root, root, great, we're in. So we're straight in to the device via Telnet. So we don't need that serial console anymore. It's less convenient than a network connection. You know, this, this is easy. We could put the device back in its box now and it'd be fine. So that port, can, uh, port scan is still running. Now, the other thing that we found interesting was that it has the Wi-Fi interface there. And this time it has an IP address. 147.2. Okay, so what we saw was in etc there was WPA PSK.conf with this long SSID that I think is the serial number of the DVR um, and the PSK of 1234567.8. So what we need to do now is we need to create a Wi Fi hotspot for it to connect to. I'm just going to quit out of Nmap there, it's going to take a while I'd imagine. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool called Create AP, and we are going to use a USB Wi-Fi adapter. So this is the USB Wi-Fi adapter we're going to use, it's a TP-Link TLWN722N. Importantly it's a V1 of this, the later versions use a different chipset and they don't do monitor mode, they can't create APs, they're a bit of a pain. But these are cheap, um, they were readily available, um, I, I use these a lot. So we're just going to plug that in. Uh, to the USB hub and power it up. We're going to pass that through to the virtual machine so it should show up. Let's give that a second or two and the device should be there. Again run D message. There we go. We've got our device there with its name like a MAC address. 
We're now going to use Create AP. So this is it is a, uh, a simple script. Well, it's quite a complex script, really. Uh, in the background, it's just using um, Host APD and a few other tools, DNS Mask, to act as a hotspot. Um, the reason I like it is that it just allows you to do it on one line. That you know, it, it's really low effort. So what we're saying is create AP, use this as the Wi-Fi device for the hotspot, route the traffic through to our Ethernet interface so it can access the internet. We're then going to take this long SSID, so you give it the SSID next. And finally you give it the PSK, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now actually what I'm gonna do here is take a bit of a punt. You can change the gateway address. It normally defaults to 192.168.42.0, but we can see here, if we run if config uh, dash a, that it's on 192.168.147.2. So I'd imagine this is going to try and communicate with 147.254, similar to the Ethernet interface. So let's just pop that in there. So we'll call ourselves 254. Sometimes you have to run it twice to get it going. Creating a virtual network interface. So we've created our our, um, our network there. It says AP0 is enabled and hopefully we'll get a connection. Now it might be the case that the camera doesn't like reconnecting um, to this machine. Let's just try running if config. Let's reboot it. Let's reboot the camera and see what happens because it does only take a few seconds to restart. I'll probably say something profound about the size of dogs whilst we're waiting for that to boot. Let's see what happens. So this will log even if the device um, tries to connect but fails to. So we're not seeing any connection trying to be established at the moment. So Telnet will have stopped working there. Let's wait until that Ethernet interface comes back up again. 168.138.2. That's very, very quick to start up. If config. So it's not tried connecting yet. Let's give it a few more seconds, see what happens kind of hoping it will automatically connect to that. And if it does, so we don't have WPK supplicant running this time, which is curious. So half of me is thinking, does this, does this use the ethernet interface by default? And if that's up, does it not use the other interface? Does it not use the Wi-Fi? So let's experiment with that. Let's unplug the ethernet and see what happens. See if the device will connect over Wi-Fi. And there we go, there we go. We've got that MAC address, C08A, that's the MAC address of the device. So it looks like it tries to use Ethernet. If Ethernet's not there, it moves to Wi-Fi. Or that could just be coincidence. So now let's try something. Let's check our IP address there. For some reason we don't have an IP address on that interface. Oh no, sorry, it's on, it's on the AP there. So we've got 192.168.147 there. Let's see if we can now access the device, 192.168.147, was it 147? Wow, my memory, um, dot two. Bang, there we go, Telnet. So it's connected to our Wi-Fi access point with that, that long serial number type thing for the name of the network and 1234567. We can now Telnet into the device um, from this perspective, so 192.168.147.2, root, root. So now we've got Telnet access to this via the Wi-Fi interface on it. So this, this is quite, quite a quite useful thing really. We've gone from wired through to wireless. So you can see there it's assumed that IP address. Now of course we did have to change the root password to gain access like this. But next up, I think what we need to start thinking about is how can, how can we leverage this? This means that the DVR is running an access point that has a password 1234567 Can we use that to attack the DVR? Can we use that to use the DVR as a pivot onto the network, the home network, the property network it's connected to? Can we de-authenticate these cameras and get them to come across to us? 
And and how how is the camera aware of that serial number, that long that long SSID? Is there some kind of communication process? Is there some kind of commissioning the first time these power up? I'm fairly certain this camera has not been powered up at the same time as the DVR. So I'm not quite sure, do they pair them in the factory? Do they set them? Now these are all things that we can investigate. But I hope there you learned that we can use Wireshark to very quickly see what the IP address of a device is, Telnet into it using this, create an AP using a USB device, and then with a little bit of prodding, a little bit of messing about, we got it to connect to us, and we're making further progress. So um, if you like this kind of stuff, press the subscribe button, like, press the notification bell, and I will be back in a few days. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.